so grateful, oh Heavenly Father, just to be in the number. Oh Heavenly Father, we thank you for the early rising this morning. Thanking you, oh Heavenly Father, for the portion of health we enjoy right now. Oh Heavenly Father, we come just to give you all the praise, oh Heavenly Father. For you know, we know, oh Heavenly Father, you have been a blessing to us. Not just for the week, or not just for this hour, but down through the years. Oh, Heavenly Father, if we looked on one hand, oh, Heavenly Father, and started counting, oh, Heavenly Father, the blessings that you have already brought us to, we couldn't even count them all, oh, Heavenly Father. If we looked on the other hand and looked at what we wish for and what we need, oh, Heavenly Father, we all we could do is say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come this morning, oh, Heavenly Father, with a heart full of thanks, oh, Heavenly Father. Thanking you, oh, Heavenly Father, for some of the kids and some of the people that has graduated, some of the parents, oh, Heavenly Father, that have went through and watched their kids grow, oh, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord. We come to celebrate you, oh, Heavenly Father, for the blessing, oh, Heavenly Father, for just to be here just to be able to see another opportunity just to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. We ask you, Lord, to continue to be with Noah's Ark, continue to be with us individually as well as collectively. Be with our pastor, O oh, Heavenly Father, continue to strengthen him. Thank you, O oh, Heavenly Father, for the word. We pray, Lord, when he breaks the word, O oh, Heavenly Father, out to us, O oh, Heavenly Father, our hearts will be able to receive it. And go out, O oh Heavenly Father, and be better stewards unto you. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Are you excited to be in the house of the Lord yet again? Come on, is anybody really excited to be in this house yet again just to wave your hands and just to be among believers this morning? Come on, let's give them praise and let's give them honor. This morning, we just want to encourage you that we are the best of no matter what we go through. No matter what we face, we come to bless the Lord. So it's a simple song with the twist. So I want you all to sing with us this morning. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together real big in the room. Oh! 
within me. I will bless his holy name. David said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. I will bless the Lord. On behalf of Pastor Carlton L. Howard, Sister Diane Howard, and the entire Noah's Ark Missionary Baptist Church, we are honored and privileged and blessed today to recognize the 2023 graduates of the Noah's Ark Missionary Baptist Church. We are so very proud of you and all that you have accomplished. And no doubt, the best is yet to come. At this time, we will recognize Sister Shania Brown. She received her associate's degree in business health technology from Augusta Technical College. Alasia Chance. Let's give Sister um, Shania Brown another hand. Alasia Chance is a 2023 graduate of Burke County High School. Upon graduation, she plans to attend Augusta Technical College to major in diagnostic medical sonography programming. Ronald Ford Jr is a 2023 graduate of Cross Creek High School. Upon graduation, he plans to attend Augusta Technical College to major in computer programming. Charnesia Frazier received her associate's degree in early childhood education from Augusta Technical College. Jordan Grant is a 2023 graduate of Augusta University, where he received his BS degree in nursing. He will be working in the ICU department at Emory, at Emory University. Travonica Jones is a 2023 graduate of Burke County High School. Upon graduation, she plans to attend Augusta Technical College to major in cosmetology. Virgil Lynch Sr. is a 2023 graduate of Liberty University where he received his BS degree in criminal justice and public administration. Brandon T. Zinnerman is a 2023 graduate of Burke County High School. Upon graduation, he plans to attend Augusta Technical College to major in welding. Linda Wimberly, is a 2023 graduate of Liberty University, where she received her BS degree in business administration. Sasha Wimberly is a 2023 graduate of Burke County High School. Upon graduation, she plans to attend Georgia Southern University majoring in forensic science. Please stand and give all of our graduates a round of applause.
and welcome to the ark. As you can see, it's graduates day at the ark. Congratulations to all of our graduates and to all of our graduates also virtually. Today, we will travel to Bethlehem Baptist Church in Graniteville, South Carolina to worship with them as they celebrate their pastor, Reverend Dr. James Abraham, and his 35 years of service. It begins this afternoon at 2 p.m., and our very own Pastor Carlton Howard is the guest pastor. I also understand that there is transportation. Please see Deacon Jenkins or Sister Drayton if you need a, a ride today. And as you came into the church this morning, I, I know that you were greeted by the fanfare as you came in the door because the coming week is VBS, Food Truck on a Roll with God. This year is the 15th and 16th of June, and it will climax with a trip to Splash in the Borough. And if you're a student for both days, you will be able to go on that trip. The students will be responsible for those fees associated with those trips. And Noah's Ark, we know we are a giving family. So if you're not planning to go, please consider sponsoring a child to go on that trip, if you will. And then join the GMBC 10th District on June 16th at 7 p.m. for a sneaker banquet to be held at the Shelly Jones Legacy Center. That's at 2872 Tobacco Road in Augusta, Georgia. We're dressing up, but we're also wearing comfy sneakers. So come prepared to have a good time. Deacon Jenkins will be able to give you ticket information on that event. Here at the Ark, we have some amazing godly fathers, and we are honored to have the opportunity to celebrate them. The women's ministry has planned a special fellowship luncheon for our men of the ark, our dads of the ark. And if you have not received your invitation, see one of the deaconess because there is one with your name on it. Now guys, I know this is a little bit difficult for you, but please do RSVP, and we'd like that by Wednesday if possible. But do RSVP to this special event that we have planned for you, Dad. Thank you. Hey, y'all, hey, it's y'all's baby sister back again by popular demand. So I'm just here to inform you and remind some of the others to come on out and join us on June 14th and 15th from 6 to 8 p.m. for Vacation Bible School. This year's theme is the food truck party on the road with God. This VBS invites children and adults to pray as Jesus teaches us in Matthew 6, 11. Give us this day our daily bread. These words serve as a reminder that everything we have comes from God and that it's by turning to God in prayer that all of our daily needs are met. We have some very intelligent, I'm sorry, I'm telling you that you don't want to miss this VBS. And we have some very intelligent ladies coming to give information about eating healthier. We're going to have Dr. Callie, the owner of Earth Bar, she will be here to share some, some natural remedies and herbs for a better, healthier mind, body, and soul. Then we're going to have May Sapp, a school nutritionist, will be here to share some fun, healthy foods that are yummy to your kids' tummy. I'm so excited. Y'all know how I like to eat. Whoever came up with this VBS centered around food is genius. Okay, back to the announcements. There's still time for you to get a plate, I mean, to get involved. Um, my stomach growling already, y'all. Just contact Sister Vanessa Johnson, Sister Sherry Gibson, or the only lady, Mrs. Diane Howard, to volunteer 
or if you need further information. Oh wait, I almost forgot to remind you, please government yourselves accordingly.
comes within me and it's my victory it's my victory your spirit lives within me so I will walk in your peace your spirit lives within me it's my victory my victory your spirit your spirit
you're not alone. And you are not by yourself. It may look like it, but he made us the promise that he would never leave us, that he would never forsake us. While you're going through, he's right there with you. Somebody said, well, you're in it right now. How do you know? Because there's somebody in the room that is on the other side of through, and you didn't make it by yourself. That's why you said, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, come on, I just need about three people to say, the only way I made it. I should have been in a straight jacket somewhere. I, I should have been in a in an institution locked up somewhere. But because God was with me, He was a light into my feet, a lamp into my pathway. He guided me through my sickness, through my trouble. He made a way for me when I couldn't make it by myself. I, I look back. I didn't see but one set of footsteps and realized that he was carrying me. It's the only way. It's the, it's the only way I'm still on that crazy job because I'm not alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you for worship that I can connect with the God of the Bible through that spirit that's in me where that spirit identified the spirit amen and connect and realize that the words were just for me love the music but the words were just for me love the melody but the lyrics struck home with me when I was in the courtroom I was not alone when I was laying on that cold operating table I was not alone in the midst of it all I was not by myself. Amen. Amen. And to God be the glory. Thank you, music. Uh, people, thank you for rendering us and bringing us into this place. Amen. This place called, called worship. Amen. It, it, it ain't the building. It's another space. Amen. That we can celebrate where we can meet God in that special place called worship. Amen. Let's, let's shout out to a folk, folk, few folk that are in our virtual congregation. Miss Nita Sturgis, who's over in Charlotte, North Carolina. The Joy is watching. The Joy Irvin is watching. Linda and the family, they're on. Amen. Barbara Howard is watching. The Lord. Brother Desmond, Desmond says good morning. Sister Holloway says good morning. Hey, Mrs. Agnes Carter, who's back in the back of us and recuperating, she says hello. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the virtual congregation. Let them hear you. Let them hear you give them a hand clap. Thank them for joining us. Our prayers are with many of them. Our prayers are with, uh, wishing our prayers out to uh, one of my former members, who's in Atlanta, Kawana Heath who's uh, having some medical issues. Let's keep her in prayer. Uh, Desmond Whitehead, Sister Isla Gresham. I uh, spoke with Sister Holloway this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's keep, let's keep them in our prayers as well. I'm excited about Vacation Bible School. Amen. I'm excited about, uh, I'm excited about the idea that we're feeding not only our physical bodies, but our spiritual bodies 
we're going to have a food truck with food on the outside, but there's going to be plenty of spiritual food on the inside. Uh, so we're looking forward to you, you guys coming. Listen, not just for grown folk. Bring some kids from the neighborhood. Bring your cousins, your grandchildren, and all the rest of your great grands. Bring them out, and we'll have something for you as well. Just make it a big day. It's going to be Wednesday and Thursday. And then we're going to we go splashing in the borough on Friday. We do need some. We do need some men to show up. I mean, for for both of the all three. I mean, the three days. Maybe you can just come one day or whatever, but we don't want to have the ladies out here by themselves with the children, with the young people. So uh, we do need some men uh, to share with us. I'm excited about that. I know we got two food trucks that's going to be out. And don't tell who else might show up. Amen. Because um, we're living in a food truck environment right now. Food trucks are everywhere. So they're going to be at the Ark on, on the Thursday, I know, for sure. Uh, so we think we're excited about that, but we're also excited about these graduates. Amen. Amen. Listen, you only get one shot at that, so we thank God for them making it through those years and the struggles and that time that they put in. And guess what? It, it will all be worth it. Amen. It'll all be worth it. And we'll say a little bit more about that in our sermon today. But congratulations to all of you guys that graduated our church family are behind you and we say congratulations and we hope that we can show it we should have shown that in some tangible way amen some small tangible way that uh, that you can appreciate that your church care about you in a, in a special way and, and when you get to the white house don't forget about 4466 amen when you when you get to dc amen don't forget about where you came from amen came from us this special place called the Ark. And so we thank God for you. Thank God for the work that you, you've done uh, to advance your education. And we praise God for you. Proverbs chapter 1. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1. Uh, amen. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1. Men, you guys respond to uh, Sister Sarah. We, we want to come together and maybe eat some, have some little lunch on Saturday. They want to feed us, so I think we ought to at least show up. Amen. Let them know you're going to be here so they'll know how to prepare, how to prepare for you. Proverbs chapter 1, for the sake of time, let's just read this, read this one verse. Let's move down to verse number 7. Uh, verse number 7, if you will. We'll move down to verse number 7. Uh, I want this, this, to, it, this, it, this will be considered the text. 1 through 7 is called what we call the context. Uh, but verse number 7 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Let me read that again. I need every graduate. Make sure you write this down. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. All of y'all rest of who ain't graduates, y'all need to write it down. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. God, we pray that you let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength and my redeemer. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I want to talk about today, I want to just kind of talk about uh, processing knowledge. Processing knowledge. We're celebrating knowledge today. We're celebrating these folk who have received some knowledge. Uh, and let me just make a quick public service announcement. It ain't just for the 11 of them. It's for you too. Amen. Because many of us uh, do not know how to process knowledge. Amen. Amen. So we, so we, so we, that, that, there are some, there are some, uh, y'all don't hold this against me, but that's some Arabian uh, Proverbs, some quotes that I thought were important. If you would listen to what it says, they say this right here. It says, there's a person who does not know that he or she does not know. That's a fool. Avoid that person. There's a person who does not know that they don't know. That's a fool. Don't talk to him. Because they may think you the same thing. 
Listen, to, here's another. There's a man who knows that he does not know. He's just simple. Teach him. There's a man, and that, that, this would be man or woman. There's, that, there's a man or a person uh, who does not know he knows. He's just asleep. Wake him up. There's the man who knows he knows. He is wise. Listen to him. Thank you, dear. Destin. Thank you. I appreciate that. But, but this book called Proverbs, uh, we've talked about this in Bible study before. Uh, it's, a, it's a compilation or, or it's an assortment of heavenly sayings, but they are directed toward earthly, watch this, they are directed toward earthly sinners, us. Uh, listen, they are not promises, they are not commands, but what they do, they represent a theology, or they represent a philosophy that's in a, in a practical form or a condensed form to make us get a better understanding of what the what the writer is saying. I like verse number seven of this this first chapter because what it is, it actually it, it it can be seen as the overall theme for all thirty one chapters of Proverbs, and that is the fear of the Lord. Uh, that they they have and and, and, and many. Some, in some countries, they have adopted this proverb uh, as their uh, mantra that they live by. They hang their hats on this proverb addressing what they are addressing is the importance of knowledge. Some have recognized the fact that all of us ought to recognize, and that is, can I say this two or three times, knowledge is power. Remind yourself of that. Knowledge is power. If you don't have knowledge, you can't expect to have no kind of power. You got to know something about something. Uh, listen, and, and what knowledge is, it is, and, and I just want to talk to you today because not, it, knowledge is it's becoming acquainted with facts. It's becoming acquainted with truths or principles that, are, that has been derived, not just somebody pulled it out the sky, but it has been derived from somebody has studied it or somebody has investigated it, and then it becomes facts and truths and principles, and then we get the knowledge from those facts. Uh, it's the idea of having, it's the fact or state of knowing, it's the perception of, of fact or truth. You gotta know something, you gotta know something about truth, you gotta know something about what someone else has studied. But the problem is, my brothers and sisters, I wanted to say this, because many of us, uh, we use our knowledge based on the wisdom of the world and not the wisdom of God. There go my sermon right there. We base a lot of our decision making, a lot of our choices, we base a lot of, of our knowledge not based, not based on the Bible, but not based on what God says, but we base it on the wisdom of the world. Uh, and, and we're living in a time when, where people think that they are as good as God. Y'all probably got some of them in your house right there, some of your neighborhood, some of your job, somebody right there. They think they are better than God, and they know better than God. They feel, they, 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 they feel that they are as good as God, that they are better than God. And listen, and many of them who feel like that, they don't even believe in the God of the Bible. I'm talking to somebody here. You, you got some folk around you. There's some folk in your circle of, uh, of friends, your circle of relatives that don't even believe in God, but yet and still you would listen to them rather than listening to what the, what the God of the Bible has to say. That's why the prophet Solomon says, who writes his proverb, that's why he says, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the be and he used that phrase 14 times in the book of Proverbs, and, and which means it, it brings it to the central theme of the Bible. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Then Proverbs 9, 10 says it again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy understanding. So you've got to get that. It's all right to get the knowledge, but you've got to process the knowledge. And we're celebrating the graduate Day and we're celebrating the rest of the worshipers in the room today and those who are watching virtually but because most of you in the room who, who know that in order to live and succeed in this world you had better try to get some knowledge in your head I don't know where that come from but you ain't got you got to know something baby you can't 
you can't just talk about you. I mean, listen, and I, and I listen, can I go on and just help somebody? And it's not always in the book. There are some, there are some grandparents, and we got some of our great grandparents, they, did, they didn't get out of the first grade. They didn't even go to the kindergarten room, but, but they got some wisdom from God. They knew how to live like that, but you've got to get something in your head. You got to get something between your ears. You got, you, you got to get something in there. But watch this. But it's not just you need to get it in your head. You also got to get some knowledge in your heart. I'm glad, I'm glad we got diplomas. I'm glad we got degrees. I, we got something to hang on the wall. But can I tell you that, that thing you're hanging on the wall, without you got it in your head, but if you don't have something in your heart, you're just going to become an educated fool. Listen, I found me a couple of quotes, and I think you might like one. This is Margaret Fuller says this. If you have knowledge, let others light their candles in your knowledge. Others are looking to you. That's why you ought to hang around folk that's smarter than you. You ought to hang around some folk that you can light your, knowledge, your candle out of their knowledge. Stop hanging around. I mean, stop hanging around buzzards if you want to be an eagle. You, you got to light, somebody light, they light your candle around folk who, who know more than you. Then I like, I like this. I'm, I got four or five. I'm just going to get this one more for the sake of time. I like what Maya Angelou says. She says, a bird doesn't sing because he has an answer. It sings because he has a song. A bird don't sing because he know how to pass the test. He, he, he sings because he knows he has, has a song in his heart. He has a God in his heart that God gave him something, and he uses what God gave him whether he knows whether the food is or not. He already knows that, the, the, that God, the God of the Bible says, I'll feed the sparrows. So he identifies that. We, listen, we, we, we are not what we know, but we are what we're willing to learn. So don't get to that point, don't get to that point like some of the rest of, some of the other folk that's watching us or some of the other folk that's in the room like you know everything. There's always more to learn. I was listening to my, my heart doctor on the radio yesterday, Dr. Mike Bowman, and he, he said he'd been practicing for 39 years, but he's still learning more about the heart. I like this text. I like this one verse, this one verse, because uh, it, it, it teaches us that, that knowledge in your heart is more important than knowledge in your head. It, you got to have the knowledge in your head, but you, you, it's more important that you have this knowledge of God in your heart. And what the, but what the winning combination is when you can put the two together. When you got head knowledge and heart knowledge. Now, there's some, there's some old coons in the room right now. They'll tell you, I, I, I wish I had some heart knowledge about 20 years ago. I had head knowledge, but I have heart knowledge. Now that I got head knowledge and heart knowledge, look like the Lord just keep on blessing me. Because and I, I can do things and everything I touch, the Lord blesses. Because it's not just based on head knowledge, but it's based on heart knowledge as well. Some, I, I, I might have started preaching on head knowledge 26, 27 years ago. I might have started preaching on head knowledge because I, 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 I could read the Bible in turn. But once you get head knowledge and heart knowledge, and you know where you get a whole lot of heart knowledge is? You got to study the word of God. You got to go through some struggles in life. And you come out of that thing and say, I'm better than I was. Even though I knew what I knew back then, there's something that God has done to enlighten me, illuminate my message, and make it a little stronger because of what I've been through. It's a winning combination, young folk. It's a, it's a winning combination. Don't try to make it on what you just learned in the book. Put some God wisdom with it and watch God work it out. Watch God work it out. I, I, and, 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 and just, just to be a little uh, an, uh, analytical here, when, when you look at this Proverb 1 and 7, what it's called, it's an uh, antithetical saying where, you know, the, the first part opposes the second part. 
the first part of the, the first part of the of, of, of verse number seven is at odds with the second part. You, you got to look at it. You got to look at it because the, the, the first line is it, it, opposed to the second part. That they're contrasting each other uh, because it says the, 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 opposite, the opposite of fear of the Lord, that's in the first part, is the rejection of instruction. What it's really saying is what it's really saying is that those who cannot or will not be taught will never attain wisdom. I'm, I'm not making up. He says the fear of the Lord is, is, is right there in the text. Uh, he says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In contrast to that, if you don't have the fear of the Lord and want wisdom, he says the next part of it is, he says it right, you know, real clearly. He don't try to, he said, but it's a fool. I ain't calling nobody no name. But it's a fool who despises wisdom and instruction. Like nobody can teach you anything. There's no wisdom that you need to learn. I don't care how many degrees you got on the wall. I don't care how, you, how many years you've been in your profession. There's more that you can learn. There's more that you can do to be more effective and impactful in whatever God has assigned for you to do on this earth. Whew. Let me go on and give you, let me go on and give you, give you, give you these quick little, quick little ideas that you can write down. And the first one I've, I've expounded on already. There's a great necessity, or there's a, there's a, there's a I don't know if this is a word, the sensuality of knowledge. That, listen, you, whether you realize it or not, knowledge is necessary for explaining anything, anything or everything that's around us. If I ask you what color those, those, those pews are, it takes knowledge. Somebody had to teach you the colors. Because I can, I can tell you that those, those, those pews are red. But because you have knowledge, you know they ain't red. It takes knowledge to explain anything and everything that's in us or even around us. But without knowledge uh, about, listen, it, it, without knowledge about something, you may as well just leave this earth. You ought to know something about something. It's, it's becoming acquainted with the facts of life, the truths of life. And I said it earlier, the principles of some form of study that has been investigated. So, so when you have knowledge, watch this. When you have knowledge, you are able to comprehend facts. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach you some another level here. But, but, but even if you're able, even to be able to gather or become acquainted with facts, you've got to have some degree of intelligence. I could start talking Greek language and I could start talking about, you know, speaking in Hebrew and, and all that. But if you don't have some knowledge of that, I'm wasting my time and you ain't going to get nothing I'm talking about. If I could tell you, tell, tell you, there's a word in the, there's a Hebrew word in the Bible called uh, 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 proskuneo. And you're going like, why, why are he talking to us like that? We don't understand what that is. So this idea of knowledge, you got to, you can only comprehend it when you have the facts. And I'll sit, I, I, I just want to make my one submission to you today is that you got to submit that, you, that, that God must be accepted uh, as the cause and the source of all things. That's when the church, that's where the church has to take a stand. That's where those who are believers in Jesus Christ have to take a stand because there are some folk, I mean, they can't explain how the world began, but they won't accept the fact that God created the world. They would deny that to their grave. Uh, so, and, and we will listen to them when we know better because we have the facts. The proven facts in the word of God that cannot be disproved, other than, uh, it can only be argued with. And, and that, that can be no comprehension of facts without knowledge. It's the basis of all truth. And we got to get to that, faith, that place where we know that God is the creator. God is the originator. He's the designer of this world. And, 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 I, 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 and I've, been, I've been trying to tell my little grandkids and those young people that I can talk about, why would you try to achieve something uh, and, 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 and try to achieve it going around the person that created it? You're going to go do everything else. 
You're going to get your doctor's degree, your PhD, your summa cum laude, but God created that thing, but you don't want to consult him about that thing. There was a fella in the back. I, the other Sunday, I, I, went, I saw Miss Carter sitting in the backyard. I, I, she watching. She, she, she can attest to this. I, they were back in the back, and I drove back. Man, I saw her sitting out there. I said, let me go back and see how, how Sister Carter doing. She's sitting in the chair, and there was a fella back there putting a, the putting a trampoline together for Lord. He was putting the trampoline together, and he was just putting a new trampoline together and getting, all, get, getting ready for the kids. And I looked at him, and I said, man, and he was just going through the pages and flipping the pages and doing little screws. I said, man, put that book down. Just, you know how that trampoline is supposed to look. When it finished, I don't read no, I said, man, I don't read no instructions. I just put that, I just put it together. He looked at me like he wanted to call me. What this, what this thing, somebody who despised, who a fool despised instruction. And that's, what, that's how he looked at me. I ain't know him. I don't know who he was. He probably talked about me when I left. But the fact is, he was going, the, the, the people that created the trampoline told him how to put the trampoline together. And here I am telling him, don't pay the people who did that. That's what some of y'all do. Don't laugh at me. Y'all looking at me funny. Y'all do the same thing about God. God told you don't marry that person, told you don't go with that person, told you don't be with that person, told you don't, to get another job. He told you to do it. And you went around God because you thought you knew somebody in politics to get what you didn't deserve. And you got it. Now you catching hell on every hand. I ain't mean to go there, but, 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 but you've got to be careful. You've got to be careful about going around the person that created this, this thing that we're in. I don't care if it's money or banking or Bitcoin, whatever it is. You've got to consult God about this thing because, because he is. I mean, we, we openly believe in him because he exists, because he is, and because he loves us, we come to him. And because he acts, we, we thankfully receive him. And I can tell you that, that if you don't fully trust God, it is in the, it's the primary reason for you not gaining the understanding for you to be successful in life. Listen, I ain't, I ain't got time to deal with it. I'm finna, I'm finna go medical, but I, am, I better not go medical. But if God created the body, and I heard, I heard, I think my doctor, I heard Dr. Max said this yesterday. You can have all, take all the medicine you want to take, but, 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 but there's proof. There are facts that says your healing is your your healing is is progressively better when you have spirituality in your life. You take the medicine, you do the procedure, you got, but you got to include some God in it. And, and the record says, record says those folk who believe in God can get through some stuff. They can get through some cancer that other folk can't get through because they are taking the same medicine, but there's a God that's mixed with that thing. There's some head knowledge, but you got to have some heart knowledge to know that if God made me, he can heal me, but I'm going to take the medicine anyway. You got to get the heart in there. You got to have the head and the heart in that thing. Stop trying to go around God when he created this stuff. I mean, listen, you want some water, you ain't going to no folk who ain't, who water turned off. Yeah, you thirsty, you thirsty, you finna die of thirst, and you, gonna, you saw they turn their water, saw they turn mat water over over there, and you gonna go ask him for some water? No, I'm going next door. Where the water running. You've got to get to the source, and I want to say this to young folk, listen, and I'm telling you because I wish I had somebody that told me earlier, and I'm telling you now, so I'm, I'm, holding it, I'm holding it to the fire, that you've got to have some God in everything that you do. The fear of the Lord produces knowledge, and knowledge inspires our faith. Faith produces salvation for the promises, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I got to get out of here, but I got to get out of here. But, but there's, that, there's this thing called the necessity or the essentiality of knowledge. It, you got to have knowledge, but knowledge by itself ain't no good. Whew, man, I wish I could stay there. 
But, but then how, how do you experience this knowledge? You've got to experience it. He says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. He is implying that there must be, and what I've already said, uh, that there has to, if the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, that means there has to be a relationship between the one that has the knowledge and the God who knows everything. I don't care if you're talking about babysitting or how to light a match. You got to know that God is in it. Because, and I'm jumping, I'm jumping across the field because the, we, we know that everything moves by the power of God. If God didn't want the world to turn, it wouldn't turn. If he didn't want the moon to glow, I'm crazy enough to believe that the moon wouldn't glow. Because I believe that he controls everything. And then if you're, if you're going to get to that point of, of having that relationship with God, since we're New Testament believers, I'm, I got to tell you this, the only way you can do that is you got to do it through Jesus Christ. Let me hang my hat here for a minute. Since we got some graduates in the room, I might not see them no more in, in, in my lifetime. But let me just tell you this, this right here. You're going to hear it. The moment you hit another campus, you're going to hear it somewhere, wherever you may go. Somebody's going to tell you that Jesus ain't real. You're going to hear it. They, and, and, and listen, and if you ain't careful uh, because you want to go along with it, you might believe it. But the Bible says, in Jesus all are hid all the treasures and wisdom of knowledge. So the person that's telling you that is the person that's going to keep you from being what, all that God wants you to be. Because you can only reach your full potential by accepting Christ into your life if all the treasures of life are in him. Why are you trying to go around the one that has the treasure? I, I hear some folks saying that. Pastor Howard, I wish my pastor would have told me that when I was 18. I just heard three voices say that. You, I wouldn't have had to go through what I went through. The foolishness that I had to go through. Thinking that money could solve my problems. Now I got money and I don't know what to do with it. Because money didn't solve my problems. But when you mix money with the Lord, when you mix money in Jesus, listen, so, so, so the point is, he says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And I'm, 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 I'm straight out the Bible here today. But you've, got to, but you've got to have this experience with him. You've got to experience him for yourself because what it does, he says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And see, there's one error that I, I probably made when I, when I dealt with this, uh, this text of teaching. Was, this talk, I said that it was reverential fear. Reverential fear is just the fear of God, you know, the fear of God, uh, you know, that, because hey, my, he's my daddy. But in the New Testament, you will find that, that, that actually the fear of the Lord is when you tremble before God. When you mess up. Come on, y'all coons, old coons. When you mess up, you start, you, you be scared to go to sleep. Come on here, I know y'all looking at me crazy. Come on, when you mess up because you fear God, I mean, you shake it, you're going like, Lord have mercy, what did I just, what, what did I just get into? I knew better. Listen, it ain't reverential fear. It's the kind of fear that God going to get me for that. Because he does discipline us. He does discipline us. I, 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 listen, I, I can talk about that because I, he done took me to the woodshed two or three times. Since I had a microphone in my hand. Thank you. Bro, thank you, Brother King. King, only one to go with me. He, he will, listen, it doesn't, listen, he will take you to the woodshed according to his word. So our fear is not just reverential fear to the idea that we just honor him, but sometimes we just scared of him. Some stuff I ain't going to do now because I got head knowledge and heart knowledge because I'm scared of what he might do. 
Young folk, y'all get y'all get out of the why. Don't don't. But God God ain't trying to beat you in the head for every little thing you do because He says all of sin comes short of the glory. But the fact of the matter is, when you get to this point and you know who He is, there's a reverential fear that 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 gives us a reverential trust in God. The secret of the Lord is with them that that fear Him, and He will show them His covenant. He'll listen. Why are you trying to listen? Many of the times, and I'm, I'm talking to young folk, those who graduated, ain't graduated, and some who are still trying to graduate. Listen, listen, God has a, he has a purpose for every life. And the only way you're going to get into that the, the divine purpose is that you got to have that fear of him and get to know him. And you got to get that. And then when you get to know him, here's what you do. Here's what all the other, all these other folk in there, they ain't going to do it now. Them folk looking, they ain't going to Then you, after you get to have that reverential fear, you're going to have that remorseful trust in God. Now you're going to go back and look back and say, God, I'm sorry for all that mess. Come on, you, got, uh, you can't just go back to yesterday. There's some stuff back yonder. Come on, it's some, it's, some, it's some stuff way back yonder. I was watching something on TV the other day, and somebody asked, somebody asked some three people, he says, what's the worst thing you ever did uh, against God? And I was going to say, Lord, I'm glad I'm not on that program. I'm glad, I'm glad I don't have to tell it. But you got to think about that thing. Think about all of that. And then when you begin to trust in God, that's when you have that remorse for fear. Say, so God, I'm sorry. I just didn't really know no better. But since I read the Bible, since I read, since I read Romans chapter 1, I understand now that, 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 that because I didn't know ain't no excuse. I ain't going to mess with that, but y'all got to read it for yourself. Romans 1, 18 through 20, 21, y'all got to read that. Because they're, they're, if, a, if a person said they are atheists, they, believe me, there are no atheists. They believe in something. They believe in some kind of higher power. They believe in something. There's something in, in the, that, that Romans the, chapter 1, the, the, the verse 18 through 21, it talks about that idea. You can't use it as an excuse, but I didn't know. Be as, as, uh, as, as if that's going to get you by because he says if you act like that and continue to act like that I don't mean to do this on a Sunday morning because this ain't a revival but you got on he said if you act like that and you're not remorseful he'll do something to you and that is he'll turn you over to what is called a reprobate mind he'll turn you over he'll turn you over to the sin he'll let you continue to do whatever you want to do but sooner or later, he's gonna, he'll, he'll, he'll allow the devil to have his way in your life. Because God is pure, and he cannot stand the sight of evil. I'm, I'm, I'm remorse. you got to have a remorseful trust in God. you got to have reverence trust. And, and then, then you got to understand that's something called the existential trust in God. you got to understand that it's the idea of, of being a uh, it's been precious to us for years and Christians, but, but it, it distinguishes between general faith and genuine faith. A lot of us have general faith. The genuine faith is when you can sing and say, I, I, I thank God, I th thank God for the spirit that's in me that allows me to have peace. That's when you know what you have. That's when you, there's no doubt that, that, that's when your faith is greater than is, is greater than just being baptized by water. That's when your faith is bigger than your problems. That, that, that existential trust in God, when you know that God is with you in everything that you do, that, that's when you really know it. That's when you know that, that, that time that he's... And so, but if you desire to be related to this source of the creator God uh, of all knowledge, you got to understand that, that, that wisdom, you got to go to him and say, I'm remorseful, God, but, but I want to put all of my trust. I want to put all my trust in you because now I realize with the knowledge that I have in my head and the knowledge that I have in my heart that I can trust you in everything. 
And I come to tell you, you can trust him, baby. You can trust him in the classroom. You can trust him on the college campus. You can trust him anywhere. But you got to exercise that knowledge you know, because it's the beginning of wisdom. You got to, it produces life. It prolongs life. It protects you in life because that's what the faith in God really does. But here's what I want to close my little sermon on a little negative note, my little conversation I want to have because the text says in the end of it, he said, fools despise wisdom and instruction. So let me tell you young people and some of y'all uh, some of the old coons too tell uh, us that, that this fact right here listen 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 that there there is some enemies that don't want you to have knowledge you got to be careful uh, if I wasn't on Facebook I'll tell you that I, I, I had to learn the hard way uh, Sabrina I had to learn the hard way when I got on the college campus I couldn't figure it out because that I was, I was up now. I, I, I wasn't, it wasn't about seven Negroes on the, on the campus. I, I said I shouldn't do that on Facebook. But, but, but I'm, hanging, I'm hanging with the other folk, and, and they pardon and invite me to the, the PB, is it PBR? I ain't know what PBR was. Invite me to the PBR party. I said, okay, let's go to PBR. I ain't know what a keg was. I ain't never know what that was until I got down there. And they invite me to, to the PBR keg party. I said, okay, that sounds like all I keg creek. I know keg creek up there in Clark's Hill. Uh, I'm going like, okay, let's go, let's go. But then when I found out I, I, I was there, then I ended up getting hanging out like the last one to leave. But what they were doing was they went in and got did what they had to do, and they went on back to the dorm to study. And I'm flunking, and they passing, and they doing the same, we doing the same thing. So I had to learn the hard way. It was a setup to try to get me out of there. Remember, I was one of seven Negroes. But, <laughs> but, but, but listen, so the setup was if we can get in the way of him getting knowledge, then he'll never be successful in life. There's some haters in your life. There's some folk around you right now. There's some folk that wore that cap and gown with you while you were marching. They were probably sitting on the same road, but they don't want you to succeed. But you got to understand, you can't let the enemy of knowledge get in your way. You got to get what God has for you, because if he has it for you, it's for you and you alone. You got to get that thing. You got to get, stop hanging around. You know, every party ought not be your party. And if God can't be at the party, you ought not be there either. I'm done. I'm just talking. I'm just talking. I'm just talking. But, but this idea, listen, that, that the enemy, see, because what the enemy does, he's tell, he, he would tell you truth ain't truth. How do you know that's the truth? Because it's in the Bible. And if you can't prove it wrong, then why, you, why should I agree with you when you can't tell me why yours is right? I mean, if, monk, if, if, if we came from monkeys, if human beings came from monkeys, why ain't monkeys still producing human beings? I mean, y'all help me out. Who cut it off? Who, who stopped it? If we came from apes, like apes ought to still be... And on the animal channel, I've been looking at it. I mean, hey, they still apes. But somebody gonna try to get you to believe that. But you got to stand on what you know. You gotta, you, you, you can't let them repress the truth in your life. So that's the repression of truth. And then listen, here's the other thing. There's some folk right now who will reject. They say, I know it in the Bible, but I ain't doing it. That's a dangerous person. A person that would say, I would rather be around a person and say, I, I want to investigate it a little more. I want to learn a little bit more about this God that you're talking about because he says fools despise wisdom and uh, instruction. A fool that does that. But listen, that, 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 that you got to understand that the, there, there's the man who knows he knows he's wise. You ought to listen to him. But those folk that act like they know that they don't know, you need to run from them. Don't get 
caught up into that thing because, because what God says here is that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And all I'm trying to tell you is, that, listen, you cannot, I don't care how hard you try. And that's why some of us, some of us late bloomers, I ain't going to look at nobody. Some of us late bloomers did what you were going to be tempted to do. And that is turn away from God. But we didn't come back till we got 45 or 50 years old. I'm saying if you get it right now, you'll be better off later on. I mean, and, I, I, and I'm not talking about living no poor life. I'm talking about if you do this thing right, God will bless you financially. He'll bless you. You will be prosperous in your life in so many ways, but you got to, you got to, you got to know how to process your knowledge. And if you want to process it, process it through the filter of the God of the God of the Bible. And I just got another email. And, and let, me, let me say this. And boy, I wish I could turn that off, but let me say it anyway. You got to be careful with these organizations that you join. In college, everybody's pulling on you. Uh, we're well, not just kind of, in society. Everybody pulling, but if that organization cannot say Jesus is Lord and Jesus is King, I, you you ought not to put the shirt on. You ought not to wear the cap. If they don't believe, now I ain't talking about the great architect in the sky. If they don't believe that Jesus died on Calvary and that He was raised on the third day morning, baby, you better run because before you know it, you're going to get sucked up into some stuff, and you're going to be believing that mess. And, and it's going to hamper your life because God can't bless you in that situation. And I don't know why I want to just, listen, I'm done. I'm, I'm through preaching. You're going to play some soft music. I'm really through. I was up there. They tried to get me in one of them little groups with my seven Negroes on the camp. And I knew, I knew that if I tried, what, they, what I saw them do to them other people, to their own, I'm going like, I don't know what they're going to do to me. I saw them, I saw, I saw them, they, one of my hallmates, he had to crack a match. And he had to say the, street, the, the Greek alphabets before the match went out. And if he didn't finish it, he got to let the match burn his hands. You, want, you did that to him? I don't know what you're going to do to me. I, I visited one of the black institutions where one of my friends, football friends, I don't know, he played football, great football player, went to Lane, and I, I met, I met on, at the campus on a weekend, three o'clock in the morning. Uh, we had been up playing beer to whistle all night, went to bed about 2 or 2.30. Beer whistle card game, young folk, y'all might not know what that is. Uh, 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 and, and all of a sudden, I, I heard my brother from Augusta, I just heard him screaming. And so I asked, I asked the other part, I said, hey man, what's going on back there? They said he just got branded. With a horse brand on his shoulder. And you want me to do that? I'm saying be careful. Be careful. Many of them have great vision and mission statements but make sure I mean the first question is do y'all you, do, do believe in Jesus and if they don't just say okay I'm going to start my own organization and that's what listen and, and I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not bragging I'm both and that's exactly what we did on that campus and here we are 50 years later and that organization is still alive on that campus. It's called the Association of Black Collegians, ABC. We can do none of that other stuff, but we ain't, I ain't, we ain't know nobody. But we just call it ABC. And if you go down there now, in LaGrange College, there are some black folk that's perpetuating that same organization, that same godly organization that didn't have the kid party. The PBR. Y'all know PBR, right? 
Pat's Blue Ribbon. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Y'all, hey, listen, all I'm trying to, this is for all of us. It's not enough to have knowledge. You got to know how to process the knowledge. Process it for the Lord's benefit. And guess what? Greater is all yours. It's yours for the asking. If you just process it properly. God bless you. I'm done. Listen. But you got to process it through that one that came down through 42 generations. You got to process it through the one who lived a sinless life. Process it through that one who went on Calvary's cross. Process it through the one that stayed up there all night Friday. All day Saturday, but on that third day morning, he got up early. Process it through him. Process your suffering through him. Process those hard times through him when you think the world is against you or when suffering is about to take you. Process it through him. And when you come out, that knowledge will tell you that all suffering is not unto death. He'll bring you out of it. God bless you. If there's somebody in the room today that you, you're confused about your knowledge, you got your heart knowledge, you got your head knowledge, you don't have your heart knowledge, listen, your heart knowledge is available to you right here at this church, right here in our Bible study, our Sunday school, in our Sunday morning worship. You can have that knowledge, that heart knowledge, to match up with all that you've learned, all that you get have in your head that you might be successful in God's way in life. Ain't got to steal nothing, ain't got to borrow nothing, ain't got ain't to take nothing from nobody, ain't got to cheat nobody out of nothing. You can have it God's way, but you got to do it through Jesus Christ. He's yours for the asking today. We offer Christ to He's you. yours today. Oh, my brother. Man, woman, boy, girl, you, you ought to accept him into your life. We Offer Christ to you, oh my sister. He will give you brand new life, new life abundantly. What? So come, come on. one today mm, oh said we'd offer Christ to you we offer Christ to you oh my brother oh we offer Christ to you oh my sister oh my resting on your feet. Let's plan to move on. Amen. Uh, remember Proverbs 1 7. Quoted all this week. Amen. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. That's in all facets of our lives. Whatever, whatever it is, make sure you fear him. Hey, reverentially, uh, remorsefully, and then you want to you be able to repent to him. In, in those times to, to keep that relationship pure. Once again, thank you for joining. The uh, offering is on the outside as you come uh, on your way out. Uh, our offering basket is there. Uh, we're going to head over to Bethlehem Baptist Church over in Graniteville, South Carolina. We'll leave here probably in about 30, about 20, about 20 minutes. I mean, I understand there's going to be a, a vacation Bible school folk. Uh, they need to see you guys in the back to hand out information, uh, your teaching information or whatever information. So go to the back on your way on your way out. Okay. Thank God for Jesus.
Amen. Amen. God, we thank you now for what our eyes have seen. Thank you for what our ears have heard. We thank you for this proverb. Thank you for giving us a heavenly view of our earthly lives. God, we don't want to be despised as fools who despise knowledge and instruction. We want to have a reverential fear of you where we can gain all the knowledge that you have for us, that we can be all that you want us to be purposefully in this life. We can get to our destiny early, and God, we can enjoy life thereafter with you.